cheating and score manipulation. The largest cheating scandal in recent history has was discovered in Atlanta during the 2012 to 2013 school year. Students in Atlanta had shown more highly improved test scores than any other district. Evidence of a wide cheating conspiracy invalidated those scores and left administrators with little idea about how effective instruction had been over those 10 years. In 2013, Education Research Organization Fairfax published a list of confirmed cases of school state test score manipulation in at least 37 states and Washington, D.C. Can I do Evans age, semi system creates stress. Test anxiety impedes learning. Science tests place a heavy weight on students that lead to anxiety. Test anxiety became such a serious issue that in 2002, California State Test included instructions for teachers on what to do if a student vomits on the test. If students, for students who have to pass the science test in order to advance to the next grade or to obtain a diploma, test anxiety can soar. Because anxiety can be so paralyzing, students may forget facts they had memorized or how to perform simple mathematical operations. In this way, the pressure placed on students to perform well ends up in being the very thing science tests are designed to assess. How much students know? Conundrum 3, KC 214A. Tests don't accurately evaluate student performance. If I want to beat the man and get to the next level, I had to do it on paper. I filled in the circles, then a, a few weeks later, scores came in the mail. Then we went around to see who was the smartest. Truth is, I had friends way smarter than me who didn't do on um, standard tests. That wasn't a point though. Beating the system was all that mattered. It was a huge, it was a badge of honor. Canon 4, Evan J. F. Tests in include cultural bias. Standard tests in Ask students to draw on knowledge that they are unlikely to obtain in school. Students draw from three sources when taking standard tests their natural intellectual ability, what they learn in school, and what they learn outside of school. For tests, the test to be fair, the first two should be the only factors that contribute to a student's score. If children come from advantaged families and similar rich environments, then they are more apt to succeed on items and standard instrument tests than will other children whose environments don't match, match as well with what the test measures. Outside knowledge consistently comes into play, making science tests on there. Canon 5, Ledesma 211A. Science testing restricts what is taught. Teams often explain how testing narrows the curriculum, limits the variety of student learning opportunities, emphasizes basic skills, and fails to measure high-level thinking, such as creativity. Teachers feel that they, they help students learn so much more than what is reflected on test scores. Connected 6, late 10 15A, overtesting. A typical student takes 112 mandated standard tests between pre kindergarten classes and 12th grade. A new console of the Great City Schools found, study found. By contrast, more, most countries that outperformed the United States on international exams test students three times during their school careers. The nation's eighth graders spend an average of 25.3 hours during the school year taking standardized tests, uniform exams required of all students in a particular grade or course of study. Testing affects even the young students with the average pre-K giving class giving 4.1 standardized tests, the report found. Thank you, and please vote for the negative side of this resolution. You had enough time. Hey. You changed the order from what you gave me, so now I don't know what was What's your four order. and five, Edmund? What are four and five? Um, four is cultural bias, and five is um, standardized testing restricts what is taught. Okay, cool. It's a great case, Edmund. It's great. Uh, I saved it, Lyle. Um, you can reopen it, I think. Wait, would you put five? What card? Restri five is um, Ledesma. Desma? Okay. All right. When you guys are ready so for you cross, didn't log. no. Whenever you guys are ready for cross, let me know, and uh, I'll, this time starts now, and I'll we'll start cross. Okay. cases yeah for sure um, we can make photocopies on Monday of a free flow if you got a good free flow of your cases we'll make photocopies on Monday you go in with it already photocopied you know what I'm saying okay
Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're ready? I'm ready. ready. Alright, fine. <laughs> um, say time starts now, whoever's timing. Okay, um, time starts now. In your fourth contention, you talk about bias and how there's outside information comes into play, and that's not fair. But would you agree or disagree that in terms of competence, sometimes outside information matters? Uh, well, so you're asking, do I agree or disagree? Yeah, would you, would you say if, if, if a task... In order to be competent about something, a task requires you to have a broad background knowledge. Then doesn't that matter in one's assessment of one's competence in that yes, matter? Yes, I agree with that. I agree with that, but the problem is some some children they don't they don't live in um, that like rich stimulus environments, mm -hmm. and that that leads to the bias because they don't they can't get access to that background information. So doesn't that mean they're less competent then, and the test should reflect that? No, but that, it's not their fault that they can't get the background information. I didn't say it was their fault. I said, doesn't that accurately re reflect a societal problem? That society needs to step it up and make sure these kids get more, more services, maybe, is fine. But doesn't it accurately reflect the fact that they're less competent for lacking that background information? But what if, but what if, I mean, okay, it can actually affect that, but why, why would the, why would the two, um, why would the children who don't have access to that background information be depressed just because it's be, by, because they um, don't do so Admin, well admin, respond to this by saying, no, it's not that they're less competent, it's that the test makers are prioritizing skill sets that are represented by a certain background and class of people. Okay. So that, you know, certain skill sets that somebody might have who grows up in a poor neighborhood might be very valuable skill sets, but they're not being tested. So what you basically want to do is cross apply number five, okay? See, the bias comes in what's being taught, not in the fact that some people do better on it than others. Okay. All right. Let me ask you another question. Regarding this um, over-testing issue, how do we know that these other countries are doing better? Well, we have data. From what? Uh, from... From a dance party? No. Do you think maybe that data comes from standardized tests? Yes. <laughs> Me too. So if that data is accurate, then can't we conclude the standardized testing is accurate? Yeah, but we're proving... Oh. No, but you're on the right track, Edmund. You say, you're right, it is accurate. It's accurately telling us that we're testing too much in the United States, which is the subject of the topic here. We're not saying the standardized test can't possibly be used to generate some useful data, we're saying the standardized tests are not correctly and well used in the United States. That's where all the harms come from. Oh, okay. So say that answer to me. Okay, yes, uh, it, it is accurate, but it's just the problem is we're not using it accurately. We're not using standardized tests. Um, no, Edmund, the, it's accurate. Hey, Edmund, it's accurately telling us that we're using standardized testing badly. Because other countries are using it more sparingly, they're not incurring all the harms that we're using. Oh, okay. Okay, try it so again. Go. So this data is actually telling us that we're not using standardized testing correctly. And then that leads to the harms that the country, the other countries above us in the list are not getting. Are not getting good, good, good. Fine, not, uh, fine. Enough. Good. Thank you. Regarding the cheating thing, doesn't that just expose bad teachers to the consequences they deserve when they try to cheat to avoid the fact that they're not good teachers and not effectively conveying information to their students? Isn't that a good thing? Oh, that's time? Okay. Should I answer? Yeah, I, I do answer because I want to see if you guys are answering it right. Go ahead. 
So you're saying that um, that because that um, that standard assessing is basically showing data that uh, teachers will not that teachers are cheating. No, I'm and, saying uh, this. I'm saying this. If we're talking about accountability. What does it mean to hold someone accountable? It means to put some sort of pressure on them to uh, account for their own behavior. In other words, if I have an employee and I say, okay, I'm going to pay you $100 a day to do this work, well, I need to see that the work has been done, correct? Yes. If I pay you $100 a day to pick apples and I come at the end of the day and you haven't picked any apples, should I pay you $100 anyway? No. Okay. So. Okay. So. In but this case, this, you've got you've got non apple picking you got non apple picking people on payroll, and they're we're we're exposing the fact that they're not picking any apples. All right, go okay. ahead. But this this harms the students as well because it doesn't give the the students the accurate data they need to bet to um to fix their mistakes, and also it doesn't help informing instruction either. Okay, that's good. Those are both good answers. They're both defensive answers, but they're good. I would turn it by saying that, that catching cheaters is only a good thing if you've already established that, that, the, that the high stakes aspect of the testing does what it's supposed to do and that we and I, I put it this way even if even if catching cheaters is in principle good because like what you said actually you do what you said instead about the kids be like well be, because standardized tests are used right now in a high stakes way it causes teachers it causes the results to be extra unreliable you never know if a teacher cheated and didn't get caught didn't cheat cheated a lot you don't know and so as a consequence we, when we draw conclusions based on this data, we're likely to draw wrong conclusions. It's going to harm education. And the problem is that in the United States, we have a high stakes approach to standardized testing. That's what causes the harms. So this way, you're not advocating against standardized testing in general. You're advocating against it being used in a certain way. You understand the difference? Yeah. All right. So go ahead and answer that question one more time. So, okay. So first of all, well, well, this is not uh, catching cheaters. I mean, the the effects are still there, which means the students are harmed because they don't have the correct. Um, they don't have. Okay, so this is the process. You'll notice that I'm having a student repeat back to me basically what I said, and he's understanding the arguments bit by bit. Does he understand it all at first? No, of course not. And keep in mind, he put together this case, not me. Not because I told him to put it together either. I assigned no such thing. He concluded now that he's got enough experience with me, he draws his own conclusions about what he thinks ought to be run, which is how he should do it. He's a sixth grader. See? You get it? If you are one of those people who's either a student on that middle school over there, or is the teacher of that class, or an administrator over there, please understand, I don't fit into any of your existing boxes. To the extent that you think you understand what I'm doing here, you don't. Okay? 